Welcome to Sailing with the Jameses. We're the James family. And we live on board our boat, Shining Light, full time. We're currently on the east coast of Australia with plans to sail around the world. This week, we are leaving the lagoon at Devil Island Point and heading north to Fraser Island. We are attempting a shortcut through the infamous Wide Bay Bar and we find out exactly how much stuff we have on board in our back lockers. We're leaving Devil Island Point today. It's about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. High tide is 6.14 and we're headed north to Inskip. So we're hoping to cross the Wide Bay Bar around 4 p.m. And um, we're gonna do Fisherman's Passage. <laughs> we've heard a lot about Fisherman's Passage and we've always wanted to do it and always wanted to check it out. So we're now in a boat that has plenty of draft, uh, less draft, I should say, to do it. And um, we're, yeah, we're super excited. We've accidentally spent a week here in the lagoon at Devil Island Point. We planned on only three to four days and suddenly, before we knew it, a week had gone by. It's a beautiful anchorage that you can easily spend more time than you planned on in here. But it is time for us to head north. people will go out and then come in through the passage and this is just a shortcut that we're doing this way have we ever hit the bar yes yes we have no it was not in a boat that we owned no we were not driving but yes we were passengers on board and yes we hit it at full speed and um, it's quite an experience to hit the bar um, come to full stop and the whole boat goes to its side and we were we hit it good uh we didn't hit it i just want to make that a really really good point we were not driving and it was not a boat that we owned <laughs> but um it's pretty well known and uh yes people do hit the bar <laughs> seven knots saving money taking a shortcut <laughs> breaking waves over there and um, the shallowest that it got to underneath our hull was 2.1 um, and we're a 90 centimeter draft um, but yeah that was awesome super stoked you can see a catamaran behind us they also just did it as well and we're just coming up to Inskip and you can see quite a few boats and the barges that go across to Fraser. After surviving through Fisherman's Passage at the Wide Bay Bar, we dropped the pick in a calm anchorage called Pelican Bay. With beautiful weather forecasts for the next few days, we decided to do something that has been on our to-do list since purchasing the boat two months ago. And it's to go through the back hatches and bring out everything that's stored in them to see exactly what we have on board and to sort them out. We have been wanting to do this for a little while now, so, bring on the spring cleaning. Today has been cleaning day. So we've taken everything out of both back lockers and put it on the back deck just to see um, what we have on board. So, we've got the sea anchor here. We've got the drogue. We've got a whole bunch of paints. That is electrical stuff, anodes, Christmas stuff blow up toys, motor stuff, motor stuff, um, more motor stuff and tools. That's ropes, that's ropes, and that's ropes. And um, Sam is currently down in the back hatch on the other side. But these are our back hatches. 
and there's quite a bit of space you can see in here the previous owner used it as a workshop and I believe that's what we're gonna use this one as as well but we're just sort of going through everything to, to know what we have to get rid of stuff or keep stuff but basically just to know what we have Helping. so we're doing a bit of a, a clean out of our half lockers and um, one of the things we've found is if you look over here there's discoloration on the floor that's all galvanic corrosion so what was sitting there was a, a spare anchor believe for the intended for the tender a sand anchor and uh, it had been sitting on the bottom and reacting over time with the aluminium and it's created all that pitting and that there so I've got a bucket here with some water I'm going to clean it up then a wet and dry vac to vacuum it all out then I'll put some vinyl etch primer on it and then a bit of a uh, metal shield just to try and uh, help it last a little bit longer and um, yeah we're gonna get rid of that anchor that's a little bit big for the tender anyway we believe so yeah we'll get to it all right so I found a wire brush I've given it a scrub then I um, got some water and that just to mainly get up the excess salt and that uh, and a cloth and I've given it a, a good clean I <laughs> had the GoPro set up but all you could see was my back and my shoulders and my arms it's a bit tight so I'll show you the finished product and then yeah we've just vacuumed it all back up so I'm not sure if you can see it there in the GoPro but if I lift this water can up that's what you know good early looks like and that there is what not so good alley looks like. So it's got a lot more pitting and um, yeah, bits and pieces all through there. And that's what gives it that discoloration. So we're going to give it a, a coat and then wait a couple of hours and then put the top coat on and hope that slows things down, get rid of the anchor. And we'll clean these lockers up and put probably only about half the stuff back in them. They were chockers with all sorts of bits and pieces and we still haven't completely emptied them yet. That's our emergency steering tiller there. That's our gaff for all the fish we're hopefully gonna catch. Up in there though, for when we put the ceiling up, they, they go around the edges of the hatches. That's my spear gun that I gotta put rubbers on and a whole heap of other fishing apparatus underneath the floor that's the pong box um, I've just put some zinc in around there because it looks like there's been a bit of a leak in there before and uh, there was a little bit of corrosion and pitting in there as well uh, yeah we'll keep going okay so it's been about two and a half hours um, since we put the primer on and uh, you can see all the, the dimples and that that were in there so we're going to put a bit of top coat on that. Uh, we'll let that dry and we'll put another coat on. Alright, that there is the finished product. So it wasn't too bad, it was only slightly pitting. I just wanted to do something straight away just to protect it and yeah, make it last as long as we can. So we're at the stage where it's time to load the back lockers up and there's a couple of things that we're not going to keep that uh, some people uh, may have thought it would be important to keep. One of those things are all of our charts. Now we've got a very large chart portfolio on here and um, when we got the boat I thought it was absolutely fantastic but now uh, the way we're going is going to be more electronic. Uh, the reason being is they're, they're quite heavy, they take up a lot of space and the truth is we're just not using them. But anytime you take away one layer of safety, you always want to replace it with other layers. So instead of doing the charts, we have three devices that are, all have individual GPS's with our Navionics and Zulu waterways and access to the internet on. We're also going to be getting another chart plotter 
Um, we also have a GPS unit going through our HF. So that there has its own GPS aerial and that'll be a standalone system. We're gonna get a plotter with another GPS aerial and a standalone system. And we're also gonna get some kind of satellite communications. Whether that's Starlink or something like that, we're not 100% positive yet. We're still doing our research, but that's the way we've decided to go instead of charts. I was gonna keep routing charts on board, just the, the larger ones with the major ocean passages because it's so much easier to see a large screen. And we've decided not to do that now. We've got a dongle, a separate dongle for a GPS feed into our laptop, that with satellite communications, and we're gonna have a world map on our table. So if it is a catastrophe, we can start looking at that. We don't have a sextant on board, and on our last boat we did, uh, we, I have been trained how to use it and we do have all the books, but on this one we're not going to do that. Um, we'll have the satellite communications instead and um, they will be our layers of safety instead of the charts. Now another thing that we are getting rid of is our power anchor. So we've got a power anchor with its own road, 28mm road, and a drogue. We're going to keep the drogue because we believe that's important if we do get caught out. But sea anchors are very big, very heavy, with a very big 26 mil bridle with a stainless steel monkey plate, and it's all very heavy. And when we do deploy it in rough weather, it'd be very hard to get back on board. So we've decided that if we do have up-to-date weather forecasts, and then in a worst case scenario, if we do get caught out, we do still have a drogue. So that'll give us a better option to try and heave to over night time or slow us down so we don't surf those big things and find a safe haven from there. Um, but those are just a few of the things that we're not going to keep and try and save some weight on. But we are replacing them with other layers of safety. And the internet will also help us keep in contact with you guys. So that was one of the big motivators for, for going that way and having some kind of satellite communications when we are travelling around. So I just want to do a quick explanation uh, for those of you out there uh, that don't know what a chart is. Uh, a chart is basically a nautical map or a, the equivalent of a map on land. Uh, and, and the way it works is um, it will have a zone of confidence and the zone of confidence is how accurate the chart is when it was last surveyed, uh, how accurate they believe it can be. That's that there. Then what it has is it has your latitude and longitude, so you can plot positions either off a of GPS, doing radar ranges or running fixes off land or anything like that. Um, with charts though, what you need to do is there's a thing called notice to mariners, and they come out every two weeks and you correct the charts. As we're going through, this chart here was published in 2000. And 11 and it has the first two corrections of 2011 in it but it hasn't been corrected since then so in order for us to update these charts it'd be quite a bit of work it takes a considerable amount of time uh, to go through all the notice to mariners you will have a, an accumulative list for each year see what needs to go in there there is also things called temporary and preliminary things and what they are is it could be that a rock was reported but not confirmed and they'll put a temporary out there and then once it is confirmed and plotted then they'll put a permanent and then you get a magenta pen and then you write in there the permanent thing or put the mark or whatever it is, change the contour line or whatever they've found. Um, electronically nowadays you can update them automatically. Charts are becoming a thing of the past. On some of the small ships that I worked on they are going away from charts and uh, it's highly encouraged by all the governing bodies to do a thing called ECTUS, which is Electronic Chart Display Information Systems. And what I found uh, when I was out there, they were taking a lot of charts out of circulation and they're not making new ones. So that was another motivator for us uh, to go electronic and keep up to date. We will not be purchasing an ECTUS compliant system, which is highly expensive. But uh, there's, the internet's an amazing thing nowadays, and I think if we have that, we're gonna be covered wherever we go. But that's a very brief overview of what a chart is. It has a compass rose on it. Uh, in there, you can see you, when, you, when you do your angles and things like that, you can also turn your compass to true. 
So you, you've got your deviation and your variation. Deviations are your magnetic anomalies on your ship and your variation is this here which changes, you can see one degree west every single year. Uh, so in 2009, that's where it was and it'll be one degree west after that. And that's the poles that slightly move every year around the Earth. But yeah, I think if I talk too much more, it'll get a little bit confusing. But this here is what a chart is. And these are what we've decided to not keep on board. And we're going to be very modern and go electronic. Let us know in the comments below on your opinion of keeping charts on board. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And we'll see you guys next week.